another band which will be performing this Friday in Minneapolis, St. Paul. Smart Mouth, that's right, Smart Mouth. You know the band Greasy Meal, you know Sons of Almighty, you know Prince and the MPG and the Hornheads. Smart Mouth, the founders and the leaders of the band, Mr. Brian Gallagher and Julius Collins. They got a great new project, Smart Mouth, and we are fortunate enough to be talking with them right here at 88.5 WBOF in Fairfield, Connecticut tonight. Brian Gallagher and Julius Collins. How you doing, fellas? Doing great, man. Doing great. How you doing, Joe? I'm doing fine, and uh, you know, after playing you, your guys' music, well, goes back to like the mid '90s until till now. It's great that uh, you guys are still passionate, dropping some ni- nice uh, tracks. So, what's been going on, uh, Brian Gallagher and Julius? I believe I'm talking to Julius first, right? You're, you're talking to Julius, man. And anytime you want to talk to Brian, I could just hand the phone over. That's all right. Go. You guys yeah. can wor- work it. You guys have known each other for a long time. How about uh, how'd you guys? Work this uh, partnership on, on Smart Mouth, and when did it first uh, start? Well, you know, Brian and I have been writing together since '95, uh, with you know, with the beginning of Greasy Meal. But uh, you know, I I was in, Mike Bland introduced me to, to Brian when they were all with MPG. So I, I was a Brian fan before I knew and hung out with Brian. But we we became fast buddies with Greasy Meal, and uh, our personalities and styles seem to go together really good. So you know, it's just natural for us to write music together. He won't let it go any other way. <laughs> That's right. So, uh, you know, working in the studio, I know you guys are the core members of the group. And um, how about bringing the other cats in? You mentioned Michael Bland, another great friend of ours. Um, who else is on, on the particular songs you got out now? There, uh, there, there are a couple of MPG guys, Mike Bland and, and Tommy Barbarella, who is also in Greasy Meal. Right. Is uh, on the keys and, and uh, synth and organ on, uh, on the stuff. And uh, Johannes Tona, who is... Is uh, just taking Minneapolis St. Paul by storm right now on bass guitar. <clears throat> Ken Chastain is on percussion. He was also on Greasy Meal. John Fields right. out in L.A. is on guitar. He's, uh, of course, was with Greasy Meal, too. So it's kind of like you know, the beautiful thing about the Twin Cities, man, and I mean this sincerely, is there's just such a beautiful, incestuous kind of wealth of talent, and people know and cooperate and work with each other if you're motivated to get it done. You know what I mean? Uh, so Julius. To this project. Yeah, Julius Collins is with us. Uh lead singer with the band uh, Smart Mouth, and you can go to uh, their pages, facebook.com, just type in Smart Mouth, and also uh, you can download uh, tracks, of course, you, you know, independent music, you got to pay the band, <laughs> but uh, Love it. cdbaby.com, also amazon.com, and uh, you've got uh, two songs initially out, right? That's right, yeah. And uh, that's that. You know, that's kind of going to be our modus operandi for this project. Mm-hmm. It's a little bit old school slash new school. I don't know how, depending upon how you, how you look at it. But what we'll do is we'll do a couple of songs every few months, and we'll play a show here in town like every month to six weeks, and then we'll do a little traveling in between. But for us, it's a good way to have quality control over the music, make sure it's always cracking. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I, I guess with with. Uh... The music business so topsy turvy, you know. You guys are always searching out ways to do it, and that's uh, what's going to work it, for you guys. Yeah, you know, for us, it seems like an intelligent way to go about it. It's gonna, it's gonna seem to foster our talents the best. I think, yeah, for sure. Um, Julius Collins is with us. You want, you want, we want to talk to Brian a little bit, and we'll, we'll definitely get back to you, Julius. So, it, man. great to have you on, brother. Thank you. Hey, Joe, it's Brian Gallagher. Hey, how are Brian, you? how you doing, brother? I'm really well. Uh, Smart Mouth, a really nice project, and, uh, you know, you're playing a bunch of, you play, uh, various instruments yourself, right? Besides saxophone. I do. I play, I play bass guitar pretty seriously as well. Um, I started doing that to, uh, enhance my writing. My, my goal is really to be a great songwriter. Now, specifically about saxophone, what's, uh, you know, your specialty as far as, you know, tenor or, you know, you, you, you play them all? I do play them all, but I, I, uh, I guess... I love the tenor the most. I started on that when I was a kid, and uh, I, I would say that's that's my main instrument is the tenor sax. Now, you grew up in St. Paul, right? I did. I grew up in Shoreview, which is a suburb of St. Paul. Uh-huh. But I, I do now live in St. Paul, yeah, most of my life. T- tell us about that, that first moment. I, I know you had a kind of a moment when you were a young kid that you wanted to uh, get into this music thing, and, and you want to talk a little bit about it? Absolutely. My dad is a huge jazz fan, uh-huh. and uh, he, he loved the band Dave Brubeck, and there was a saxophone player in that band called uh, named Paul Desmond, and that was running pretty much continuously through my childhood. 
I, I just I always knew that I wanted to do to do that, and my dad put the sax in my hand, and it just started when I was ten. Yeah, Dave Brubeck actually lives within uh, listening uh, distance of our radio station. So is, is that right? right? Yeah, like, right here in Connecticut. Yeah. yeah, and he wow. still and he still was getting out there and, and performing all the jazz fests. And I know he's very he's in his nineties, I think now, isn't he? I think so. Yeah, I think he maybe just celebrated his ninetieth uh, birthday and he had his sons out with him. And wow, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now I I got to ask you this because uh, you were out touring with uh, Taylor Hicks. Did you come to Torrington, Connecticut, the Warner Warner Theater? I sure did. See, if I knew you were in the band, I would have been there. I, I live about ten minutes walking distance from there. Is that right? You know, yeah. I wish I would have thought of it at the time. And, and if that happens again, I'll, I'll be sure to I'll be sure to say hello. Oh yeah, definitely. So uh, Smart Mouth is uh, a great new project from uh, members from the Minneapolis St. Paul music royalty out there. Brian Gallagher, who's who's joining us, and also Julius Collins. And uh, we got to get into some music right now from Smart Mouth. Uh, this is. Uh, my heart to you and uh talk about uh writing this song and and the band and recording this one uh my heart to you started out as uh, a julius collins idea and he put it on his answering machine phone to save the idea oh really I guess, yeah i guess it went on for for a couple months like that until we finally recorded it and then uh we just we get together and we we hash things out and uh out, out comes a song so you recorded uh in any particular studio out there or uh, we recorded at a studio called Brew House. Okay. And then we also recorded at a studio called Flowers. All right. And, uh, yeah. So Brian Gallagher is with us. Also Julius Collins, Sma- uh, Smart Mouth, out of Minneapolis, St. Paul. And uh, they're going to be performing this Friday night at the Caboose. And we'll talk more about that gig and also uh, more about the music from Smart Mouth right here WVOF. All right. That is brand new music from... Smart Mouth out of Minneapolis, and uh, we are really honored to have on our show right now Brian Gallagher and Julius Collins of Smart Mouth, and they're gearing up for a big show at the Caboose this Friday night in the Twin Cities. And uh, why don't you guys give some information on what people, uh, where people can uh, find out about the Caboose and Showtime and uh, maybe getting tickets and stuff? Uh, there, you can get uh, the Caboose is online. You can just Google the Caboose at Minneapolis and all the information you can buy tickets online there, and um, the show starts at uh, nine thirty. Maid is going to open, mm-hmm. and then uh, Smart Mouth goes on at eleven to twelve, twelve thirty or one o'clock. Now you guys, you guys, uh, as veterans in the Minneapolis music scene, I just thrive on playing live. I mean, the, I I think Greasy Meal had a it was the Sunday night, right? You had a big following. Sunday night, right, out in the Twin Cities? Yeah, we did. We played at the Caboose every Sunday night for about three years, and uh, we, we, we gathered quite a following by the, by the end of it, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and greasymeal.com is, is still up and running. That's, that's amazing, yeah. and people still hitting it up. And you guys were kind of ahead of your time, in my opinion, with uh, putting up different live tracks and, and samples of stuff, you know, you didn't officially release, and wow, you know, and, and even a radio thing going on. Yeah, we have we have it's still going on actually. You can go and and uh, it's live continuous streaming radio Greasy Meal. We recorded every show we ever did and wow. it's playing all the time. Yeah, I I've got one of my favorites was uh when you guys were doing more bounce to the ounce and uh something yeah. with uh I think Julius was having a dream about somebody getting injured or couldn't play the drums <laughs> some, some wild thing like that. So uh Brian Gallagher's with us. You want you want to pass the phone back to Julius? We'll give him a Sure. Okay, we'll, we'll come back and talk with Brian Gallagher in just a bit. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, lead singer of the group, Juice Julius Collins. And, uh, you know, we were talking about Greasy Meal so much, but another band, one of my all-time favorite records, Sons of Almighty. All oh, right on, oh, Yeah, man. and, uh, you know, you just had the, the who's who yourself and, and the other guys on, and a guy who's actually performed live in our studio twice, Jeff Lee Johnson. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, he just yeah, came he in. Yeah, that was that was a crazy crew, you know. That that was really, really a phenomenal three year period. It took us about three years, I think, to write and record that 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 disc. It was a pretty intense group of individuals, <laughs> obviously with Jeff and Michael and Sonny. But I have to say, it was it was really, I don't know, it's just a phenomenal and, and unbelievable experience because that was just some serious excellence. So I appreciate it, man. Yeah. Did you guys record any, any other stuff than the uh, 
the first release? Was there any stuff in the can you ever going to release one day? We we have recorded about another half of a disc, and obviously people are uh, scattered in a thousand different directions all the time. But Mike is really kind of the the catalyst for that sort of thing, as he is, ironically enough, for for this project. He just kind of kind of has a way, and, and things kind of end up getting done on his time frame because. Uh, he is really like the glue in many cases to a lot of these things, and, and he's been instrumental for Smart Mouth already. So he is uh, the guy who kind of put the guy. He's he, he's the guy who talked me into coming to Minneapolis from Atlanta years ago. So he just has a way of saying, "Let's do something," uh-huh. and then get done when he says it. And, and he's got those crazy uh, answering messages right on his machine. <laughs> <laughs> That's one interesting cat, man. Yeah, yeah, Michael Bland, and I, th- I think he's actually coming here uh, playing at the casino, playing drums. Uh, not too long from now, after he does the gig with you. Yeah, that wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't yeah. surprise me at all. Right. So Julius Collins with us. Now, t- tell us about you. I mean, you have such a distinctive singing voice. We know right off the bat it's it's you singing. Um, when did you get the inspiration to, to use your voice and, and first sing? Well, you know, hey, I had my first band when I was 11. Oh, wow. So I, I, I grew up singing in church and in school. And uh, when I found out that I you know, that I had a gift, it, it, for me it was it was like freedom, you know, so I, every chance I got to do it, I was all in for it, so putting the band together in fifth and sixth grade uh-huh. was, was uh, you know, my first real experience with that kind of camaraderie that comes with being in the band, so I've always loved being in the band, and, and so every situation has been a graduation from one situation like that or another. This is a little different because this is me and Brian writing songs and then putting together uh, different musicians to play different shows, but still, it's just a good feeling to work with with other people who have kind of a like mind. Now, now when did you move to Minneapolis? Uh, in '91, I came up to visit some friends. I, I was living in Atlanta, and some friends of mine used to tell me I really needed to come to Minneapolis and check out, you know, the scene, and because it was my kind of deal. And so I came up to visit, and the, the day, the first day in town, I I uh, went down to see Doctor Mamos Combo, and I was I was a little bit uncomfortable walking up to Bunkers because it, at the time it was really a biker bar. So there were like 15 Harleys out front. <laughs> and I was thinking to myself, this is no place for a brother. Right. Well, I, but, I, uh, I feel a little nervous myself. <laughs> well, but you know, the, minute, the minute I went inside, it was like the essence of the Twin Cities. It really was. It was like uh-huh. a melting pot of people, different kinds of people, people in suits, people in Birkenstocks. You know, black people, white people, straight, gay. I was like, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. And uh, Prince was there that night, and he was sitting in, and Sheila E. was sitting in. And so I, for me, it was a mind-blowing experience. That night, I decided to move here. And uh, the next night, they used to play every Monday and Tuesday. The, the next night, that night, Mike wasn't there. But the following day, he was there, and I, and I sat in with the band. And after I sat in with the band, he stands up from the kit and puts his big paw on my shoulder and says, you want to start a rock band? And... Uh, I decided that night I was moving to Minneapolis. Uh huh. So uh, you know that's that's kind of the the uh, the genesis of everything for me here. Wow. So so twenty years later, Smart Mouth is, yeah, is out front and center. Uh, Julius Collins and Brian Gallagher, Michael Bland and company. Uh, we're gonna backtrack and play something right now from Greasy Meal. And you know I gotta say this because my wife always says that one of her this is when we were dating. It might have even been before I met her, but uh, I remember her sending me uh, a program from the Montreal Jazz Festival. She's from Montreal originally. And, oh, right. And, and Love she, that, dude. And she had little comments about uh, Greasy Meal performing them, how great you were, and it was it was raining during the set. And, you know, yeah. so I figured I'd relate that before we get into uh, a track, big track from uh, Greasy Meal, Unfaithful. So Right on, man. Thanks a lot. We're going to get into this right now from uh, Greasy Meal, uh, the old band from Mr. Julius Collins and Brian Gower. We'll come back and talk to the guys one more time. You got time? Oh, yeah, sure. All right, this is uh, Greasy Meal. All right, that is uh, music from Greasy Meal, Unfaithful. Members of that band, original members, Julius Collins and Brian Gallagher, who join us tonight with their new project. They are still on Minneapolis with exciting, great new music. Smart Mouth, and they'll be performing at the Caboose this Friday night. Two new songs out. We're going to get into another one before we say goodbye to the fellas. But, uh, you know, we've been tossing the phone back and forth that you guys have um, when we talk with Julius. And I guess we'll talk with Brian next. Sounds good. I'll I'll pass him Uh, over. Yeah. Thanks, Julius. You got it, man. Hey. 
So uh, Brian Gallagher joins us, saxophonist and bassist and uh, multi-talented instrumentalist. Uh, you know, we, we uh, know, of course, you've worked with uh, Prince and the MPG, the horn section and, and all that. Prince is performing actually in, in New York City tonight and uh, right. at Madison Square Garden. What was your first uh, experience uh, recording and, and touring with, with Prince? And, and what was that like at Paisley Park and those, those rehearsals? The whole experience really started with, with uh, Michael Bland. I was sitting in with a band that he played with every Sunday night at another bar in Minneapolis, and he had heard some of, some of the work we had done and um, uh, used, used us on a project that he did, and then somehow Prince heard that, and next thing you know, we're at rehearsals, and we, we didn't see Prince for at least a month and a half. There was no word about you're doing this or you're going on tour or you're, you're hired, nothing like that. We were there for a month and they'd record us and then they'd videotape us and one day in walks Prince. And uh, it just went from there and it was six years later. Yeah, one of, one of my favorite uh, tours that I saw was the, uh, the Act One. I believe it was Act One, performing at uh, Radio City Music Hall in New York. Yes. Yeah. You were at that show? Yeah, I, I was at both of them actually. Oh, that was great. I was at the second show, which which really, I, I don't know if you guys were so engrossed in your music, but when Prince took the fall on stage, which yeah, during, I think it was during Scandalous or Insatiable, uh-huh. and he did a spill on the floor, and you know, you're like, i never seen that happen to Prince. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, yeah, I haven't either. I, I don't remember seeing that that night, actually. See, you were, you were so into uh, your own playing. Yes. Right, it's, right. It's, very rehearsed before you go so it, it you can do it in your sleep really it's like mm-hmm. it's, it's become second nature well you know from all from all the tours and, and and venues you played with prince and you know the the big tv shows what, what were a couple of the highlights for, for you personally as a musician that you know you, you came home that night and called your family or friends up and said i can't believe i just did this oh one of the highlights definitely was wembley arena when we played for over a hundred thousand people it was it was really incredible stepping out onto that stage. Oh, okay, so you did multiple dates there, right? Yeah, we did. We were we were in London for a couple of weeks. And the, you did a lot of the after shows as well. Yeah, yeah, we did. Right, right. So, so, so uh, the Twin Cities music scene. Uh, you know, we were talking with Julius. He's been out there twenty years. You've been out there all your life. How how has it changed uh, since you became a professional musician till the, till this day? What what has changed the most uh, for the Twin Cities? I think the the music scene has been pretty constant over that whole time. There's there's all you know the places change to play, but there's always a lot of places to play for musicians, and it, it really it keeps the the amazing talent going here, and um, it, it's always really thrived. There's always something going on here. So so uh, the clubs and, and the venues are are pretty much packed seven days a week. People going out to see see live music. It's changed a little in that in that people don't go out as much as they used to to bars, but but bands that have their own following, it's like you you promote your own your own thing, and it's it's uh so it's it's sort of become that way now now here. Now the big gig is this uh, Friday, Smart Mouth, uh, with Brian Gallagher and Julius Collins, and uh, you talked about a few people on the record, but uh, who should people besides yourselves uh, expect to see on stage that night? On Friday night, we're going to have Michael Bland on the drums. We're going to have Johannes Tona on the bass guitar. Mm-hmm. And we're going to have Russ King on the keyboards. Uh, we're going to have Craig Screamer Powell on guitar, as well as Sonny Thompson on guitar. Wow. Uh, myself and Julius Collins. And uh, that's going to be a great night. So so uh, how about Tom, Tommy? How's he doing? Tommy Barbarell, of course. Um, he's doing great. He's yeah. uh, living here in Minneapolis as well. I, I believe he works as a producer during the day. Um, he did some touring with John Mayer, right? I don't know if he was on. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't know if he was on tour with John Mayer. Right. He, he was on tour with Nick Jonas for a while last year. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Nick Jonas administration. Yeah. yeah. I think Ricky Peterson was on. Was out with John Mayer. Right. There. There it is. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, and uh, and Ricky, Ricky, and uh, JP Delaire, I think they're out. They're coming back in St. Paul from uh, Europe. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Another great band. Oh so yeah. Many, so many great people. In there. Yeah, yeah. A lot of competition, but you guys are all all talented, and uh, 
you know, you've, you've got smart mouth, and uh, I think uh, you guys were alluding to prior to about the uh, what you guys are going to, you know, release a couple songs throughout the year and, and, and do tours in the Twin Cities and, and coming out live and playing. Any plans to come uh, around the country, maybe eastward? We do have we have do have future plans to do that. Nothing set up right now, but we we are working on making that happen. Right, right. People can go to the caboose dot com, and uh, that is Friday night nine thirty nine thirty for you or nine thirty for Meta. Nine thirty for Meta to ten thirty, and then we'll come on shortly after that. Well, what's our closing time out of Minneapolis on the weekends? It depends on. Uh, it can be two, and it's generally one. Uh, it, it, it depends on the, what the bar wants to do. Oh, okay. So we're going to uh, actually, uh, I think we're going to get into one more track from uh, Smart Mouth. You can go to uh, cdbaby.com and also uh, pick it up at amazon.com. Sign up for their Facebook page, and we'll come back and talk one more final time with the guys from Smart Mouth. This is 88.5 WVOF in Fairfield, Connecticut. Joe Kelly here with the. You definitely have to pick those new tracks up. That's anything you want from Smart Mouth, and uh, we played prior to that the new one, My Heart to You, from our special guests, Mr. Brian Gallagher and Julius Collins. And Wow, that, I'm partial to that one. That, I love that song. Oh, thank you very yeah. much. You, you've got uh, Desdemona on that. You Tell us uh, how you got affiliated uh, with Desdemona and, and working with you guys on the record. Well, I would just go out in, go out in Minneapolis at night and uh, listen to music, and I, she's on the scene all the time. She has a a uh, guy she plays with named Carnage who does beatboxing and they they do uh, small smaller bars and and larger gigs too. But I just saw her around town and we asked her to to uh, guest on this song. She she came in and wrote that in forty five minutes. Wow, wow! So yeah. smart. How, how Brian Gallagher is with us and uh, how how many tracks you guys got in the can for Smart Mouth? You've been doing a lot of recording. We just started recording. We've been writing for years and years. We have songs songs that are um, in the pipeline waiting to be recorded. So we just finished these two, and right now we're working on the next two. We, we plan to release two new songs about every six weeks and mm-hmm. corresponding with a, with a Kaboo show or a show in town. So, so the Minneapolis press getting excited, I'm sure. You know, Got to get John Bream out to the show, right? Exactly, yeah. We've, we've, we've sent the invite. Right. How, how about Chris? Is he still working for the paper? Yeah, he is. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah he, he showed us some love in the paper before, so... Oh yeah, yeah. He's he's been been really good to us. Right. Um, you guys, uh, I'm I'm sure plan to have more shows. W- would you guys be uh, into doing a regular spot at the Caboose like you did with Greasy Meal for Smart Moth? Yeah, we might consider that. I think I think we're going to keep it to once a month right now and and do a little bit of traveling in between mm-hmm. and uh, make sure that we have time to produce the the tracks in between. So we want to get two songs out every time. Now, uh, you spoke about uh, your background with your dad being such a jazz aficionado. Let me ask you about, for our musicians listening out there, your particular uh, horns that you use uh, for your own recordings in live. I, I love Selmer saxophones. I, I just I, The older, the better. I have a 1948 balanced action tenor, mm-hmm. and uh, the, the same for the alto. And uh, I, I, I just love them. You can't, you, you can't really match the sound, I think. Wow, going back that far, right? Yeah. 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 Now, how about uh, saxophonists that you always keep up to date on? Uh, are, you, are you a big listener to, to other saxophonists? Oh, all the time. I love Chris Potter, and uh, there's, there's some great saxophone players in Minneapolis, too. There's a, a guy named Mike Lewis in town that's, that's unbelievable. Mm-hmm. He's in a, a band called uh, Fat Kid Wednesdays. Okay. And uh, I love Joe Henderson, Dexter Gordon. Uh, big Charlie Parker fan, Michael Brecker, and, and you also play the flute. I do play the flute. Yeah, I do. tell tell us, uh, you know, recording uh, playing sax on the most beautiful girl in the world, one of Prince's uh, kind of, I guess, is is uh, test of the water for independence. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he did many versions of that song, and one of the songs was an instrumental version. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I played on that, and we actually. Went out to L.A. and did a video for that that, that was never released. But we we shot a bunch of footage, which which I I never saw. But yeah, he put he put some time into that that project. It was Ricky Peterson produced that that particular song. Right, right. So so, so down the road, I'm sure 
uh, hopefully one day you'll be able to look back and, and you'll see things from Prince and you, that you were on that never saw the light of day. I'm sure there's there's tons of that. There is. We recorded all the time when we were there, I'm sure. He called it the vault, and I'm sure there's many, many tracks in, in the vault that I, I hope will be released. Yeah, that, that I think we all do. So, uh, yeah. Brian Gallagher, i got to thank you so much for, for stopping by. Hopefully one of, one of many times for you to come by the show and, and you know, you have the invite to come to the studio. I really appreciate it. And, and have a nice show out, out uh, Friday night and, and keep dropping us that music. We'll have you on uh, throughout the year. All right, we'll do that, Joe. Thanks again. Appreciate it. You, you got it, Brian. So uh, we'll talk to Julius one more time, and then we'll get into uh, one more for the Greasy Meal Fanatics. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Brian. Sure. Thank you. Hey. Hey, Julius Collins. We've got to talk to you one more time before we bid you do. And, uh, you know, you're getting ready for the big show. You still working out? Oh, yeah, man. It's, uh, it's a form of survival. Right, right. <laughs> it's like therapy. That's where I get my zen. Yeah. A, a lot of the people, you know, your musicians out there, I know Dave and Tommy, they're, they're big fitness fanatics as well as yourself, right? That's, that's true. Yeah, you know, I, we're, we're a little bit of a strange breed in, in what we do, but I, mean, I have found a lot of really healthy-minded and healthy people with healthy spirits in, in, uh, in this business, oddly enough, because uh, I, I think you need some kind of focus sometimes, you know what I mean, and it kind of helps with that. For me, I know it helps with my temperament. Let's just say I'm a lot nicer. <laughs> I'm working out. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, tell us about your musical upbringing. I know you had a band at an early age, but uh, what were some of the, the musicians and records that got you excited about? Well, for me, I, I grew up in a in a foster home with a lady who was from old Mississippi, so uh-huh. there was no there was no radio or popular music. So the only music that I listened to growing up was was church music. I mean, I, I sang in church, and I was a church. <laughs> four and a half days every week. It was just kind of a very, wow. very um, <clears throat> guarded existence for the longest time. I, I really started listening to music until I was, uh, like, in my early twenties. You know what I mean? Oh and, wow! Uh, yeah. And and I don't really listen even now. I don't listen to a lot of music. I mean, but the people that really kind of moved me over the years, obviously, were were Stevie and and, uh, and Prince. Really did it for me too in different ways. But Stevie and Donny Hathaway, those those dudes really kind of got me. Um, because they were they were brothers who kind of approached singing the way that I I I thought I liked you mm-hmm. know what I mean and uh, they seemed like honest singers and I, and I loved that about them there was something really in, that was full of integrity whenever they would say anything there was nothing for show it was all always for you know from the heart from the soul and and uh, I think in my uh, you know early twenties I started to get into rock a little bit more also and so when I moved here. To Minneapolis, Mike <clears throat> Mike started Black Julius, which was just a funk and roll band, mm-hmm. and you know, uh, so, so for me that it, that was my way of getting out my yayas. Greasy Meal kind of satisfied that also because we were we had there were so many elements going on. It, it kind of gave me freedom to kind of rip whenever possible because I like to I like to sing out and I like to to have a good time with it. Well, you'll be on stage having a great time with the new band Smart Mouth, and that is uh, this upcoming. Friday at the Caboose, 9.30 Showtime, Maida opening up, Maida Miller. Michael yeah. Brent, Mike, Michael's doing double duties, playing with the Maida and yourself? He is. That's how, that's, how he, that's how he likes it sometimes. <laughs> right, right. So uh, also got to give our love and thanks to Brooke Aldridge, working real hard for you guys. And She's sensational. We call her the little general, man. She runs the show. Right, right. Oh, she's on top of it. So she, she just really loves, loves what she does and great musician in her own right. She's a really supremely talented individual, and it's, it's pretty. She's quite versatile, so we're lucky, so lucky to have her working with us. And, and Lady Gaga learned at the at the feet of uh, Lollipop, Brooke Aldridge. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to say that. <laughs> I love it. I can't wait to say that to her. Yeah, yeah, we we got it on record, Juice. So <laughs> I love it, baby. That's nice. Yeah, we'll send we'll send you the copy of the whole interview, and and if you just missed out on this interview with Brian Gallagher and Julius Collins, is a smart mouth. We'll be re-airing it in its entirety with additional songs at UpRoomWithJoeKelly.com in the next couple of weeks. Uh, sign up for our mailing list, and uh, you know it's going to be uh, exciting to be playing out there in the Twin City. So, you know, th- thanks for all that new music. Hey, hey, man, listen, uh, thank you for the support. We sincerely appreciate it. We'll just keep it coming for you. Yeah, we got to get into uh, some some old uh, Grease and Meal music. 
uh, from the band. Let's see. Uh, how about uh, Goodbye Everything? Sounds good. We'll be playing that Friday. Oh, really? Okay. You got the set list all worked out? We already, yeah, Mike's already got the set list out, and uh, he's uh, he's the big general, let's just say. Okay. He just calls it out from behind the kit? Well, well, no, no, no. He's uh, he he. He is kind of the MD for this project, and you know, I, I, we kind of give him carte blanche. Like, what songs you want to play? He picks <laughs> the songs from Greasy Mill that he loves, and and uh, we've picked some covers, and he's picked a couple covers, and and then we'll play about you know eight smart mouth tunes, and you know that's how we're going to get down. So he kind of orchestrated the set, and uh, I I generally do that thing with Greasy Mill. I I was always the guy who kind of wrote the sets because that way I could kind of visualize what the night was going to be like before I got there to kind of help me energy wise, but. But I'm perfectly comfortable with the way he runs it because I've had lots of experience with him that way also. Well, I, I just remembered a, a quick question I had for you because I was always amazed that uh, when Greasy Meal reunited that you guys got together and just had a rehearsal. I remember watching the, the photos and some of the videos before you did uh, your reunion concerts, uh, putting things back together. And, you know, any plans to do that uh, ever again? <laughs> well, you know, it's... I think it's a function of getting everybody on the same continent, for starters. Right, right. But, uh, we, you know, we've talked about it, and we've had seven of the eight of us, uh, you know, kind of play like a really low, down low kind of deal mm-hmm. um, at the end of the year a couple of times. But it's just, it's it's a difficult task. But I imagine it'll happen at some point. And, and believe me, that was a real, leave, uh, real you know, living and breathing organism. So it wasn't hard for us to kind of fall back into that thing because that was a real case of, people's energy working out together, you know, all of us kind of keep in one room together. It wouldn't matter how big or small things kind of got done. All right. Well said from Julius Collins. Thanks also to Brian Gallagher of Smart Mouth and uh, go see them at the Caboose Friday night in Minneapolis. So thanks guys. Thanks for having us. I appreciate the love, brother. All right.